Hey everyone, it's Allison here with New Little Life. I'm a nurse, lactation consultant, and breast pump expert. Today, we're going to be talking about building your freezer stash. How much do you need? How to do it? Why to do it? All of those things. So if you're new here, please feel free to subscribe if you like all things breastfeeding and pumping because we <laughs> like to support working moms in their pumping journey in our private pro program, which you can learn more about down below. But let's dive into a freezer stash. This is a question that I get pretty often. So we're just gonna kind of dive into some of the basics, how much you need, how to build it, how to use it, all of those things. So first things first, let's address the question of how much milk do you need in your freezer? <laughs> this is largely dependent on what you're trying to do. And it varies a lot. There really isn't a one size fits all in a freezer stash. It depends on your baby's age your feeding patterns, your breastfeeding goals, your milk supply, how it went in the first little bit, how it's going now, how far postpartum you are. There's a lot of factors here. And I've seen everything from huge freezer stash of people have multiple freezers, tons and tons to just a, a few days worth in the freezer. And so how much do you really need? It depends on what you're doing. If you're going back to work, you need at minimum enough for the first day back because in theory you can pump that day for the next day and kind of stay one just the next day ahead. So if you're going back to work, you have to have something, right? And we're not going to get that all on the day before we go back because you're still feeding the baby. So this is something that we need to work on during maternity leave to just so that you're prepped. Most mothers I find that go back to work really want more than one day. Uh, a few days could kind of have their peace of mind. If you could have a week's worth of milk, that would be great. That would really take a lot of the pressure off. Some moms want even more than that. And for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm here to support you no matter what your goals are. But if it's giving you a lot of anxiety and just having more milk in the freezer would be great. You don't mind a small oversupply and that's what you want to do from the very beginning. Let's tackle that. If you really want to focus on breastfeeding and you want just kind of the minimum, maybe a little bit extra milk in the freezer to kind of deal with it because you're going to play it by ear and just go with the flow. We can certainly do that too. If you're not going back to work, I mean, in theory, you don't need a lot. And for those that aren't working, I usually recommend just what you can collect from the haka or just like random pumps. They only ate on one side and you needed to get this off for some reason. Honestly, building a stash with that is probably fine if you're not going to be separated from your baby very often. If you are gonna be separated regularly though, we've, we've gotta have some milk in the freezer. Now, I know a week's worth of milk might sound kind of daunting. <laughs> you know, for babies older than six weeks, they're usually taking in about 25 ounces a day. So 25 times seven is, you know, just short of 200 ounces. That can seem like a lot of milk, especially if you think about it in all at once. But don't forget that a freezer stash is built ounce by ounce. Just like your breastfeeding and pumping journey has probably been so far is little by little, one day at a time, here's what we're doing. So sometimes I like to, to reverse engineer the math. If you need 200 ounces in the freezer and you can collect three extra ounces a day, how long is it gonna take you to build that stash? I shouldn't do math live during filming. <laughs> I should have these calculations done. Oh, my oldest son would be like, mom, you can do that math anyway. It might take you a while to get that much milk if you're only storing three extra ounces a day. It's gonna bother me. <laughs> it's gonna take you 66 days, okay? So if your maternity leave is 12 weeks, it's kind of like a common one, that's two months. Two months of your maternity leave, you're gonna have to be saving three ounces a day to hit 200 ounces in the freezer by the time you go back to work. That's not that bad. The first month you can focus on breastfeeding, can introduce the pump, and you know start working on building that up a little bit by bit and then you have a whole over a week's worth of milk in the freezer okay so sometimes stepping back and looking at what do we actually need to do can help you not only know when to start pumping but how much you need or what your goals are and where to go from there if that still seems super overwhelming then maybe we need to readjust the goals you know how much do we really need i know on instagram and pinterest and whatever you see these huge freezer stashes but in my opinion, it's just not necessary unless your goals indicated that. Now, there's been a couple of people that I've worked with inside my program that maybe they are an older mom and they used in vitro for their first baby and they want to have a second baby relatively quickly. 
and they, but they still want to hit that one year of breast milk. And so for them, a big freezer stash is great. Like we're going to be producing milk, 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 freezing what we can so that you can stop pumping and breastfeeding at eight, nine months and start your in vitro process again for the next baby, right? Like sometimes it makes sense, but you're just kind of going to go with the flow. You're going back to work. You're doing your thing. I encourage you to come up with a realistic goal and then figure out a way to get there. If one of your goals includes donating milk, which is wonderful and such a compassionate and helpful thing to do, then go for it. Like knock yourself out with a huge freezer stash and more power to you because you're amazing. And I'm glad that you exist in the world because more babies need breast milk, right? Okay, using your stash. I have realized the more I work with pumping moms, especially intimately inside my program is that using your stash can actually be really challenging (laughs) and you're building the stash to use it. I get that. And I know you know that too, but there is something that is really defeating, I guess you could say about going into the freezer and taking a bag of milk and using it maybe because you weren't able to pump enough for that day, or maybe because you spilled some milk, or maybe because we're just, we're struggling in the moment and we're, and we're not having enough milk dipping into your stash and using it for some reason is very mentally hard to do, even though we built it for this specific purpose. So if you're feeling that, just know that it's common (laughs) and it, happens and you're not failing by using what you've stored. Okay. That's what it's there for. But just, I wanted to just tell you, you're not alone in doing that. I also recommend uh, when we start talking about using your freezer stash is to start using it right away, especially if you're on maternity leave, you know, pump some milk, freeze it. And then the next week, unthaw it and feed it to your baby. Not only is this great bottle practice, which we talk a lot about inside my program, but it's also good to know if your baby will take frozen breast milk because they won't always do that. Sometimes it can taste a little different after being frozen and then we can adjust. If you've, if you've done your 200 ounces, I'm just throwing that number out by the way, please don't think that that is like the normal or the, the goal, okay? <laughs> if you've got all that milk in there and then you go back to work, you unthaw that first bag and your baby won't take it and you realize they won't take any of it, that's just as bad as like having nothing at all, right? In fact, if not worse, because you put in a lot of work <laughs> to get that. So I recommend using it from the beginning, rotate it into your daily stuff. Okay. I often get this question too. My freezer is full of, you know, vegetables and milk. Should I get a second freezer for my breast milk? I guess that's kind of a personal question, but if you intend to store more milk and you want to keep doing that, you might need to get a second freezer. It can be kind of Tetris of freezing milk in there. I always recommend being efficient in how you you know, not only pump and get milk and, but also store it in the freezer. So always store it flat. In fact, oh, it's in my drawer over here, but I have a, a freeze it flat, which is really, nice. actually I'm going to grab it and show you. Okay. Check this out. So you can get this on Amazon. There are some lookalikes that are definitely not as good. So make sure you get the freeze it flat brand. I think I actually have a coupon for it too. I'll put it down in the description if I do, but you put your breast milk in here. This one is actually a double. So you can put two bags of liquid milk in there. You put the little strap on and then it freezes it super flat in between those boards. And then you can stack it so easily. You can make what we call bricks out of that. So you have a bunch of flat stacks, individual bags, and then you put them in a large gallon Ziploc bag. And then you've got like a brick of milk. Again, being efficient in how you do that can help you maximize that. Did my freezer stash look like that when I was lactating? No, it was random bags in the freezer shoved in between like peas and carrots and chicken nuggets and all that stuff. It was not that pretty. Although I personally never had a huge stash. Um, even when I did go back to work, I was pretty comfortable just kind of going with the flow. And and that was just me. You know, some people need a lot more than that. And if you do, you'll, you'll be able to make sure it's efficient. So that's a nice tool for you. I always recommend freezing in smaller quantities than in larger quantities. I know those bags are measured to six ounces and they'll hold even more than that. You can get eight ounces in those bad boys, but Freezing it in smaller amounts is great. And a variety is nice. Three to four ounces tends to be a really nice amount, but feel free to also do some one or two ounce frozen bags too, because there's nothing worse than feeding four ounces of milk to a baby and they want one more ounce, but you only have them in four ounce quantities. (laughs) So small amounts and, and frequent is a great idea. 
I don't tend to love the like ice cube looking trays that I see out there. Some of the ones that have a cover, I think that could work, but you definitely don't want to freeze your milk that you're feeding to your baby just open in your in your freezer. We want to keep it as it's not sterile, but as clean and sterile as possible. So like the ice cube trays are, are not my favorite. Um, although I, I like the one ounce little sticks, I think that's a good idea. So if it has a, a cover and you can, you know, use some tongs and, and put it in a bag later. Again, if there's any reason to be extra careful with your baby and their immune system and stuff, that's not the best and kind of adding an extra step, but especially for older babies. Anyway, that's just kind of my personal opinion. I, I like to pour it in the bag and keep it sealed and, and go from there. You also want to use the oldest ones first. So first in, first out. So you can kind of come up with a system to rotate the milk through like that. Now, when you're using a freezer stash, it can be tricky because if you're feeding breast milk from the first week of their life, to them at five months postpartum, those nutrients and antibodies and all the things in there are different. So I always like to do a combination of, of fresh and frozen milk. I never, you never wanna just, just do frozen milk from two months when your baby is six months old, because it, it's just a little bit different. But we do wanna rotate that in because it does expire. And I'll put a link down to the, the CDC if you're in the US of the expiration dates and stuff like that. Just so you know, an interesting fact as you know, I'm a military spouse, so we move a lot and we lived overseas for a while. And I got to serve moms from a lot of different countries, all the NATO countries, actually <laughs> about 33 different countries. We saw moms from all over. It was wonderful. I didn't realize that different countries had different storage guidelines. <laughs> so feel free to explore that a little bit. If you want the UK, for example, their guidelines are a little bit more lenient than the U S guidelines. Again, it's just the organizations that, that make these rules. So, you know, I'm in the U S now so typically give out U S guidelines, but look at your, your country and your region and see where they're at. But also no, it's not like a fixed finite <laughs> thing. Um, I would never advise you to go against guidelines, but if your milk is out for an hour at room temperature and your baby is suddenly hungry, it's been an hour and 10 minutes, but the guidelines are an hour. I mean, you just kind of have to make some of those decisions for yourself on what you feel comfortable with. If milk expires after six months and 12 months in the deep freeze, would I use it if it had been in there for seven months? You know, that's up to you, <laughs> but it's not always as finite and strict as I, I had thought, especially once I started looking into some other countries regulations too. So just kind of an interesting note. I encourage you to make the decisions that feel best for you. Now, don't stress the timing too much. Your milk is still wonderful. If you've got milk from when they were two months old, they're five months now, feed it to them. Like, it's great. Your milk is perfect. It is wonderful. I'm so glad that you're giving breast milk to your baby. So don't stress these things too much. It's just not worth the brain power. I know that sometimes the thought of creating a freezer stash can be a little overwhelming and it can be unknown. And especially if you are feeding at the breast and we're trying to add pumping on top of that, I know how complicated that can get because you don't wanna take any milk away from your baby that's feeding at the breast, but you also want and sometimes need to be creating a stash for the freezer. I get that. I know it's hard, <laughs> it's a lot to manage. If you want some help managing that, and a step-by-step -step guide and access to experts like me who can really help you through this, then let me know. There's a link down below to learn more about our program, which is called Pumping for Working Moms. We talk about all this stuff and we can help you come up with a plan and we are there forever. This is a lifetime access program. It's not a one-time consult. I wanna help you for your whole journey of starting on maternity leave, building this up, making pumping fast and efficient and doing it all while you're going back to work. I know you have a lot of questions and I hope you found some answers in this video here, especially about creating your milk stash. We need to talk more about when to start doing that and, and when to add pumping on top of breastfeeding, especially during maternity leave. And that may have to be a, a separate video, but all of this is already inside the program. If you just want it laid out and just like someone to tell you what to do and to just like not have to worry about it. That's what we do. <laughs> so let me know. I would love it if you would subscribe so that you can see more videos. I would love to see you here again. I'll put a video up top that I think that you'll like and that may help you further along in your journey going back to work. So I wish you the best of luck and reach out if you need help. Happy pumping.